your hair. It's so cute. Thank you. We just uh, we did it last night for a movie, so you were the first person to see it. I was going to say, I was not expecting that at all. <laughs> Good. Yay. Mission accomplished. That's awesome. So it's for a movie. What movie are you? Can you say anything about what you're um, I can't say the name of the movie yet, but it's. I'm really excited. We're out here in LA and um, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's very much needed right now. Definitely. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. Of course, I grew up watching, of course, in Hairspray, like everybody else. But I really want to delve into what you've been doing during quarantine and your other projects as well. So what have you been up to? So after, well, after the quarantine, well, at the beginning of the quarantine, I guess I found myself, you know, uh, like a lot of people craving structure and schedule. Mm -hmm. And so I decided I need to put myself to work. So I started writing a book, um, a memoir about my life, and I started writing a screenplay. I really got into writing. Um, that's what I use most of my time for. And yeah, developing movies and stuff like that. Um, working on a few other little projects as well. Music is always something that um, I'm like forever working on. Um, so yeah, I, I just, it's been a really good time for me to um, get to know myself, really, and get to know what I want to do in the future. Definitely. Have you like written a book, or what have you been writing? Yeah. So it's been it's been a book about my life, um, and I mean, it's I, I I've read some of it back, and I'm like, this sounds crazy, but it's all true. It's all very true. Um, and yeah, so that's been that's been really cool and introspective to like really go back and and like dig up certain memories and um that's been interesting because you know they say write from what you know but um but then at the same time i'm also i found myself wanting to um write a children's book as well so i'm, I'm writing one of those as well in honor of my um my pug frankie so uh -huh. yeah so i mean for me it was just i wanted to use the time to be creative and to go after, you know, um, make this time work work for me. And so that by the end of it, um, I came out of it, you know, with more projects, but also just, you know, um, more stuff going on. Because for me, the more stuff going on, the better. For, same here. I'm like a workaholic. I always like to be doing something. Yeah, exactly. And then I know you also created a podcast called Nikki Nights. I was taking a look at that. What made you want to start that? I, you know, I started Nikki Nights because, um, well, it actually started with my friend, uh, my roommate here in LA, uh, Georgina Leahy. We started just going live together on Instagram and talking to fans and like answering questions. And then all of a sudden, one day, Jonathan Lipnicki popped on and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm such a huge fan. And I went live with him and I, we started um, uh, having conversation. And from then on, I I DM'd Ricky Lake and Carney Wilson and I was like, hey, would you guys want to come on and, and do like this thing? And they were like, yeah. And so it started. And now I think we've we've interviewed close to I think like 100 people. Um, and it's on Spotify. It's on I think it's on iTunes and YouTube. And, you know, I think it's important to have the video aspect as well, mm -hmm. because I think just to see some of the expressions, some of the stuff we talk about is so much fun. So it's a blast. I'm having a great time doing it. I think for me, what wanted, what sparked it was that interest in hosting and the interest in getting to know people mm -hmm. on a different level. Um, Cause I feel like for me, you know, people, they know hairspray, they know like that's, that's what I'm known for. But um, I think it's really cool when you can get to like delve into other areas of people and get to know different um, aspects of them. I agree because although that project was really great and I'm a huge fan of it, I want to know more about you and like your other projects and what you're into personally. So that's also why I like hosting. Did you create your podcast during quarantine? I did. I did. I created it during quarantine at like the early, the early stages. I want to say like April, May. Um, and then, yeah. And then after that, it took off and I just, I, I've, I've, we've been putting out an episode every week and I love it. I just spoke with, um, the brilliant, uh, Latin Grammy nominated Gina Chavez yesterday oh, nice. and it was absolutely incredible just um so wonderful to speak to 
you know, a fellow queer woman and uh, just hear her take on the music industry. So it's been really fun to get to talk to people from all different industries and all different backgrounds. And, and it's been really nice and I've been enjoying it. And I think it's something that now in the future, I would love to host a show show, you know, <laughs> that'd I think be that would be so cool. That, that'd be awesome. And of course you mentioned that you spoke to another queer woman and you came out like semi recently and that like broke the internet in a way you definitely became a big part of the community. What was that like for you? Oh my gosh, it was wild. It was so exciting and so cool. I, uh, I wasn't really, I knew it was going to make a splash, but I didn't know it was like going to make like a cannonball. <laughs> um, and I, I was just, I'm very appreciative for the support and the love that I've gotten. Um, it was, it was, it was an intense moment because I was just, you know, here we go, vulnerable, ready, you know, this is it world. Um, but I've always been that kind of a person, like, I take, take it out, take it as I am. And, um, it was really nice to finally share with the world that aspect of my life. Definitely. And from what I saw, it was a very positive reaction. Did you have a lot of fans coming to you and commenting nice stuff? I did. I did have a lot of fans. Um, the comments were beautiful. But then I started getting DMs from fans, um, you know, telling me that I had inspired them to come out. And I was like, oh, my gosh, no, no, no. Like, please tell me like you did it. Because I, I think that coming out is is very personal on your own time and, and you need to do it on your own time. But so I just wanted to make sure like they didn't do it like because I did it. And they were like, no, 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 we wanted to do it. And I was like, OK, I was, <laughs> I relief. But I was happy to know that my um, my coming out uh, definitely, you know, helped them in some way. So that was really cool. Of course, you're known for hairspray, but you've also done other projects like like you were recently in quarantine, like the like the project. What was that like for you? That was really cool because that I shot in my house. Oh. So um, yeah, it's funny. It's usually like getting up and going to work every day or like, you know, it's a set. And, and um, I'd like this time on set, normally we have to tell like people, everybody, please be quiet. This time it was my family were the people. I was like, <laughs> guys, quiet on set. And my mom's like, um, you mean quiet in the living room she's like get out of here um but yeah that was really fun filming it at home and working you know with those really talented actors and, and mm -hmm. the director it was really cool and it was a fun experience I loved that you know um the donations were made to the actors fund and you know especially during such a rough time mm -hmm. so it, that that was one of the major um one of the major things that drew me to the project was that it was so fun, but also that it was going to be helping people. And do you have any holiday traditions with the holidays coming up that you're excited for? I know it's different. In, this Christmas is super different um, because I, you know, of coming out here, obviously with COVID, but then coming to California and um, uh, moving. And so it's going to be interesting. Um, Christmas traditions, I think, you know, even though for me, it's all about family. So I know I'm going to be on FaceTime with my mother from the minute I wake up anyway. Oh, nice. um, so I think, but growing up for me, my favorite thing was going and looking at the lights, getting in the car and going with my family to get the lights. Um, my favorite thing about Christmas, I remember were my uncle Steve's cookies. He would make them every year. Um, so I miss those and just, yeah, I, I, the Christmases that we had were incredible growing up. So I look at it like when I am maybe not celebrating as I would like this year, um, I'm like, I've had so many incredible Christmases that I'm cool. If I just like sit and watch, you know, to Santa Claus one, two, and three, <laughs> you know, and, and have some hot chocolate, but, um, yeah, this year I'm actually just going to be here and working and and probably spend it with you know one one or two friends that are COVID tested and all good that's good I'm sure you'll make the best of it it seems like you're a very positive person so I'm sure you'll have a good time I'm pretty positive I feel like <laughs> yeah I just I've always been that type of person where I have to find the glass half full you know um I just yeah I just, I refuse to see it any other way. <laughs> it's, it's a good mindset to have, especially now with everything going on. I feel like we all have to look for something good. Yeah. You know, 
I feel like it's important to look for something, a little bit of a lightness in, in every area of darkness. You know, it's such mm-hmm. a scary world that we live in to begin with. And then when you add a pandemic on top of it and, and all this stuff going on, then we forgot about the hornets, like the, the, the killer hornets. And then there was that wild election. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been crazy. It's been so stressful. So just, you know, I just tell everybody just, I go off of my grandmother saying, just treat everybody the way you would want to be treated and just find a little bit, a little bit of good thing, something, even if it's, you know, you went to Starbucks and they put like a little extra whipped cream on top, whatever. I feel like, yeah, we, that's a small win for the day. Like I text my friend, all of, my best friend all the time and I'll say, oh my God, today's been da 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 but this but my letter that was supposed to come in the mail did come in the mail so small win for today like <laughs> I mean that's the best way to, to go about it and of yeah. course I have to ask about hairspray because you're very like known for that project and it's still beloved by many fans including myself to this day what was it like getting to be such like a part of such like a notable movie that's still so beloved it was it was a wild experience. I mean, I know I keep saying wild, but it is because it's just it, it, there's no other way to describe it. it. It was truly it was life changing. It changed um, obviously the course of my life, but I think it it showed me so much about myself that I had no idea. Um, uh, I had no idea how strong I was or how passionate I was. Um, and I think after hairspray, you know, it really showed itself and it emerged. So, um, hairspray for me was just the greatest blessing. And I look back on it every single day. There's not a day. I mean, I, every day I pinch myself and I'm like, are you, are you sure this really happened? Like, are you sure you got to make movies and like, this is what you get to do for a living? Like, cause it just it seems so crazy, you know, like it's still, cause it's such a big, massive dream. And I feel like the minute you stop dreaming, Mm -hmm. that's when everything you have to, you have to keep the dream alive in your heart. And so it's like, even while I'm on a movie and I'm working, I'm dreaming for that next project you know definitely and her story was a remarkable movie my sister and I actually dressed like um my sister was Tracy and I was Penny for Halloween when we were smaller that's so cute that's adorable I love that you know I have to tell you that my favorite one of my favorite days of the year is November 1st it's kind of like my own little Tracy Turnblad day and I'll tell you why because I sit here and I will get all of the dms and and um tags of people who have dressed up as Tracy for Halloween the night before and then they post them and tag me and the next day I sit there and I go through all the pictures and I repost them because it is so amazing to see the creativity and for me it just it touches my heart that she has meant so much to these people that they want to dress up for her you know the one day a year that they get to celebrate and really dress up so it just, I'm honored that they carry her legacy on. Definitely. Time. I listen to like, You Can't Stop the Beat all the time. It's like my workout song. And I like how many issues that the movie covers too. I feel like it's something that can be rewatched over time. It's like a classic, I would say. Yes. You know, there's a song um, that Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman wrote called, uh, it's like, hey, old friend, let's look back on the crazy quote. It's called, we got so far to go, come so far, got so far to go. And I feel like the lyrics are so true more now than ever. Like mm-hmm. we've come so far, but we have so far to go. And and the, the messages of hairspray, you know, unfortunately are still incredibly prevalent in today's society. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, you know, and the message can apply to so many different things. So I feel like with these songs that Mark and Scott wrote and, the messages are getting across, but sometimes you don't know that you're learning, you know, it's, it's making it fun. And I think that's one of the magical things about Hairspray is like, we have this massive, massive movie about something so incredibly important, but you know, you're singing with us and you're dancing with us and, and you're making a memory with us. And I think that's, that's the magic of Hairspray is it makes you feel it. You literally feel the beat. (laughs) <laughs> and lastly like where can fans stay connected with you and find you on social media 
So you can always follow me uh, at Nikki Blonsky on Instagram. Um, you can follow me there all the time. And then TikTok, it's at the real Nikki Blonsky, uh, where I'm over there just doing God knows what. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah I, I, it's so fun I love TikTok so um yeah you can keep up with me there and you can always uh tune in to Nikki Nights on Spotify just type in Nikki Nights or iTunes or um YouTube so that's where you keep up with me well thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me it was a pleasure meeting you and chatting with you anytime the pleasure is all mine be well and happy holidays everyone stay safe